Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milenia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, fuel prices to drop on Monday. Birth registration goes electronic. And silent protests planned over SDA school closure. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Fuel prices will decrease across the board on Monday. The price of unleaded petrol, premix, kerosene, diesel and LPG products have been reviewed and the new prices have been determined by the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission. Chief Executive Joel Abraham says the prices are determined by the movement in the international prices. Motor Spirit, uh, there's a reduction by nine cents, so it moves from $2.09 to $2. Premix goes from $1.92 to $1.84, a reduction of eight cents. Kerosene goes from $163 to $154, a reduction of nine cents. And diesel uh, reduces from $189 to $182, a reduction of seven cents. Uh, the LPG prices has also been uh, uh, calculated and the new prices are as follows. 4.5 kg cylinder prices reduced from 13.81 to 12.89, a decrease of 92 cents. 12 kg cylinder reduces from $36.84 to $34.37, a reduction of $2.47. 13 kg cylinders reduces from $39.91 to $37.23, a reduction of $2.68. Bulk gas reduces from $2.59 to $2.41, a reduction of $0.18 cents per kg. And auto gas uh, reduces from $1.74 to $1.62 per litre, a reduction of $0.12. Cents. Waiting in long queues to register for your child's birth certificate is now a thing of the past. This afternoon, the government launched the new birth registration mobile app called eServices, under the Digital Fiji app, allowing for the electronic registration of the birth of a child. Anna Ravolo reports. The tedious process waiting in line in this building will no longer be a problem for new parents who frankly already have enough to worry about when welcoming a newborn baby. As of today, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing away with some of the stress faced by new families, making the days and weeks following the birth of a child less of a hassle by bringing the birth registration process online for the very first time. The last uh, thing, it was very hard because we always go in line, but now uh, it's easy because uh, I just have to go through internet and without any line. More good news is that those registered electronically through the app will have the cost of the first birth certificate waived. For the time being, this new app will only be available to register births at the Colonial War Memorial Hospital. And I understand that within the year, it will roll out uh, the rest of the hospitals in Fiji. Parents need to download the birth registration app, follow the instructions on the screen, and submit their registration electronically. Once the online registration is completed, parents then can schedule a set time to arrive at the medium office where they can collect the birth certificate of their newborn child. Anna Rovulo, FBC News. Parents of students at Vatovono Adventist College are planning to stage a peaceful protest at the school next week. Eleanor Tarangai View reports the parents want the SDA church to know that they are not happy with the decision to close down the school next Thursday. This state is brewing among parents of Vatubonu Adventist College after the SDA church failed to inform them of plans to close the school. <laughs> They only called the teachers and pastors and met them in Sao Sao. No one told us anything. Our children cried. Some parents say, if it happens, their children won't go to school. We are really not happy with their decision. On Monday, the parents applied for a permit to stage a peaceful protest before the church closes the school on the 18th of this month. People are the ticking of the country. Tikina Tewa, Tikina Tunlo. 
will be present on Tuesday. Parents have also laid out plans should the SDA church maintain its decision to close the school after their protest. A similar decision by the church in 2004 led to a brawl at the school. Plan A, if they want to close the, uh, the school, what uh, happened in 2004 is going to happen again. I'm not uh, threatening the, you know, because uh, the people, uh, they are boiling now. Plan uh, B, so we have to work with the landowners, landowners to revoke the lease and apply for a new lease and the school to be run by the Vanua. FBC News understands this is not the first time the SDA Church has made decisions to close down Watuwonu Adventist College. The first one was in 1984, the second in 2004, and this one this time around. The community has said enough is enough. The protest is planned for Tuesday, 16th of April. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. Any changes to the current bus fares will only be made after real-time data is collected and compiled. This was stressed by Transport Minister Chonil Sumate in response to threats from some Western Division bus companies that they might stop providing services because the cost is too high. There hasn't been a bus fare increase in the past 10 years. However, fares are currently under review by the Fijian Competition and Consumer Council. Details with Philippe Naikaso. Not just when anybody's saying anything. The transport minister today made the government stand clear. They will not act on claims but will follow proper procedures before any decision is made. So what we need is the real data. I keep saying this, anybody can say anything. Where's the data? Where's the data? Show us the numbers. Has the revenue really gone up? Has it gone down? Some say they have a lot of loans in banks and so forth. Is that, have those loans been for the business or for other things? We need real data. I'm not going to make a decision just on the base of somebody screaming. Usamati says over the past years, it hasn't been all doom and gloom for the bus industry. Over that time, the, the, the cost of fuel has gone down. There's been all kinds of tax breaks, all kinds of things. So what we need is the real data. Responding to the comments, the Fiji Bus Operators Association General Secretary Roy Lachin says the profit and loss statements submitted by the bus companies is sufficient enough to determine the revenue and costs. Lachin says they're also confused as to what data the minister is referring to as bus companies have gone out of their ways to produce financial statements to the Independent Review Bus Committee. The committee has also spoken to 14,000 people and 35 bus companies so far. Philip and I, Castle, FBC News. Meanwhile, this after the Bus Fair Review Committee revealed it has completed the nationwide review. Chair Joel Abraham says the final deliberations are being carried out and a report will be given to the Land Transport Authority. The review was conducted utilising financial data provided by 32 bus operators and views of the public. Abraham says work will continue into different elements of the sector, such as a review into the e-ticketing system, bus routes and a regulatory framework of review. He also highlighted that the Bus Operators Association have also raised concerns. The Independent Bus Fair Review Committee is here to promote fairness in an exercise of this nature and we will ensure that we are fair to the bus operators as well as to the Fijian public. Still to come, construction labour shortage addressed and art exhibition raises funds for needy children. Details after the break. The Construction Industry Council is adopting different methods to address the skill shortage issue plaguing the industry. Chief Executive Vijay Naidu says at the same time they are emphasizing on the important role the construction industry plays in our economy. Kritika Kumar reports. Work is underway to lure young people to join the construction industry workforce. I think instead of importing trained workforce from overseas, we have brought people who are unemployed, walking the streets, doing things they should not be doing. 
um, otherwise, we can train them, we can help them get a skill so they can get a job in the industry. The council believes labor shortage in the industry is due to people's mindset that construction work is not important. The industry is out there trying to recruit as much as we can, as many of the workers as we can, and we really want them to go out and do a decent day's job. The Fiji Higher Education Commission is urging parents to encourage their children to take up trade education rather than staying home. If our learning environment is not right, if we don't know what the learning outcomes are for our children, we don't know the relationship between what they're doing and industry, our children are not going to be successful. The Fiji National University will now be offering Level 4 certification for tradespeople. The CIC will hold a conference in June to discuss other issues and the progress made by the industry. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The man who allegedly attacked six police officers in the Lainavisi police station last year will go on trial next February. 25-year-old Samuel Mbokandi appeared in the High Court this morning and was further remanded. Bokandi is charged with six counts of intent to cause grievous harm and six counts of resisting arrest. Last year, Bokandi and his de facto partner had an argument and she went to the Delinovesi police station to lodge a complaint. It is alleged that Bokandi arrived later and assaulted the six police officers and damaged the Fiji police force property. The matter is adjourned to May 6th. In an evening of art and fundraising to assist children, 75 original pieces by acclaimed local artists were showcased to raise funds for Save the Children Fiji. The exhibition, hosted by the British High Commission, was also a precursor to the establishment of the Fiji National Gallery of Contemporary Art. Maggie Boyle attended the art exhibition and filed this report. The invitation-only event was a feast for the eyes and an opportunity to help those less fortunate. Last year, for example, Save the Children Fiji helped over 1,520 children with school bag kits at the beginning of school year. And are aiming for more funds this year to support education assistance programs. For Save the Children Fiji, the assistance will allow them to help more children. But where we don't have funding to, do, to meet the requests that come to us is our education assistance program. We receive requests from families who need support for children's school bags and stationery, and also early childhood centers that request education resources. The artist behind the event, Lambert Ho, says while this was an evening to do good for the artist, it was about opening up spaces that are in short supply. For the past 40 years since I've been painting, and I'm so glad now that government and the British Council is now getting this space across uh, in town, the old St. Stephen's House, to be the National Contemporary Gallery of the Arts. The National Art Gallery is expected to open in 2020. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The University of Sydney and the USP Journalism Program last night launched a documentary film called Parenting in the Smart Age, Fijian Perspective. Executive Director Professor Heather Horst says the film is about the struggles of parenting with children now having access to smartphones and social media. Horst says over the past four years, they've been exploring ways in which mobile communication has been changing lives across the Pacific, especially in Fiji. Itself focuses upon themes that we've heard about in our interviews um, and the experiences that parents, children, and others have navigating the use of smartphones and social media. But rather than being prescriptive or a guide for what to do and what not to do, we hope that the film provokes a collective conversation about the challenges of new communication technologies. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, Fiji Rugby Union Chair Francis Keane confirms a low-key celebration for Fiji Sevens. But first, Rachel is here with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Minister to attend Belt and Road Forum in China. And in growing Fiji, new training for persons with disability. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Yeni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Koroko, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. 
Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Outriga, Singatoka. Gold FM. Leading business tonight, three Fijian ministers will travel to China to attend the Second Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation at the end of this month. Chinese Ambassador to Fiji, Jian Bo, says the forum will produce a range of outcomes, including both governmental cooperation agreements and initiatives, as well as concerns, cooperations, projects involving the business sector. Bo says the ministers for fisheries, trade and infrastructure will be able to have fruitful discussions with 40 leaders from various countries. I'm sure that their participation will, will, will facilitate uh, and the, uh, the better understanding on the Fiji side about the Belt and Road. And also uh, we, can, we can come up with some new ideas and uh, projects uh, we, can, we can work on. FBC TV's food show Exotic Delights has been picked up by Maori TV New Zealand. Exotic Delights is our half an hour program hosted by renowned chef Lance Sito, who takes us on a journey as he combines ancient cuisine and his knowledge of healthy eating with a whole new world of flavors. This is FBC TV's and Fiji's first locally produced television program to be licensed for broadcast overseas. The production is of international quality and standards have been appreciated by Maori TV's acquisition team with other international broadcasters showing interest as well. And now Sinifa from HFC Bank joins us with the latest from the trading world. The US dollar held firm today after strong US labor and inflation data soothed concerns about the world's largest economy while falling oil prices weighed on commodity-linked currencies such as the Canadian and Australian dollars. Data released last night showed first-time filings for US jobless benefits dropped to a 49 and a half year low last week pointing to sustained labor market strength. Volatility for sterling plunged after the midweek deal to postpone Britain's exit from the bloc to October 31st, meaning it would not crash out this week without an agreement. A decline in copper prices and political uncertainty weighed on the Aussie dollar, which dipped 0.1% to extend losses from a day earlier when it sank 0.7%. The New Zealand dollar, also sensitive to shifts in commodity prices, slipped to its lowest since January 22nd. That's all from HFC Bank for this week. Vinaka. Thanks, Anifa. On to today's exchange rates as it was set this morning. It was a mixed day for the Fijian dollar, which made gains against our trading partners, Australia and New Zealand, and also climbed against the Japanese yen, but slipped slightly against the other currencies we cover. After rising yesterday, commodities prices fell today. Oil dropped from a recent shortfall high to just below $64 a barrel. Gold fell more than $12 to 1293 per ounce. And silver was down as well at 1498 And in Going Fiji tonight, an Urat Massage Training Center has been opened by the Fiji National Council for Disabled Person in Lombasa. It is the first center of its kind in Fiji, aimed at training persons living with disability on how to perform an Urat Massage. A Urat is a traditional Malay massage, which involves soft tissue manipulation of the whole body to elevate different types of conditions. Executive Director for the Council says the centre is part of an action plan by office officials from the FNCDP who came back from a Europe massage training in Bali, Indonesia. In fact, it is the in thing right now. The open market, you could see there's a lot of people who's going for massage therapy. So we have uh, given that opportunity to our people with disabilities as well to be employed or to be self-employed. Employed in the open market, which means they could be employed in a hotel, in a, in a parlor, or open up their own business in the, within their own community. And that's a wrap on the business desk for this week. Jamie is up next with sports. Thanks and good evening in sports tonight. Napoleoni Ratu to debut in Singapore. And Rugby World lashes out at Israel for Lao. Details coming up.
Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Me. No sorry, Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Singer Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jackson. No sorry. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Napoleon Ratu will debut for the Fiji Airways 7 side this weekend in the Singapore tournament after being named in Gareth Baber's final squad. The long-time extended squad member replaces Terio Tamani, Asaili Tuivoka is the 13th player for the tournament. The remainder of the squad is unchanged from Hong Kong with Paul and Rani Sinukula to lead the national side again. Fijiana, sorry, Fijian Sevens coach Gareth Baber believes the strong leadership of Paul and Rani Sinukula is vital in Fiji's bid to overtake the USA at the top of the World Seven Series. A remarkable fifth successive Hong Kong title means that Fiji heads into the defense of its Singapore Sevens crown just seven points behind the USA, with three tournaments on the series remaining. Meli Tavanga reports. Gareth Baber blooded eight new players in Hong Kong and has praised the influence of his captain in shaping them. He puts Hong Kong in its place, as I've said, and he moves on. He's the first to do so. And, you know, that's leadership qualities in my mind, is that it's, it's somebody who understands um, the, the, the little elements around what we do, not the big... Uh, displays of behavior um, and he is always ready to do the rubbish work for himself. The Welshman hopes Paul and Rani Sinukula will show similar leadership skills in Singapore this weekend. You have to lead by example and he did that fantastically well last week and we saw it in his performances. But what the bits you don't the bits you don't see is what the leaders do and particularly Paula does around all that and guiding the group where they need to be to be able to provide focus for the next job of work that we have. Fiji faces Canada in its opening pool match at 4.36 p.m. tomorrow, then they will play Scotland at 8.02 p.m. before facing South Africa at 11.28 p.m. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. Scotland Sevens head coach John Dalzil has named an unchanged squad for this weekend's Singapore Sevens. Fiji Rugby Union Chair Francis Keane has confirmed the small celebration will be held at the Nandi International Airport when the five-time Hong Kong champions return. Keane says they don't want players to be carried away with the tournament win as their main goal is to claim the World Series and the number one Olympic qualifier spot. Despite ongoing discussions between the FRU and the Ministry of Sports about a major celebration, Keane says they would rather players spend more time with their families. For us, uh, winning the series is a bigger goal. It's not only about winning Hong Kong, it's winning the series. I know uh, Hong Kong uh, is like a mecca to many Fiji Sevens uh, players and also Fiji Seven supporters. I believe there's going to be a, sol a small celebration but very low-key. Israel Folau has likely played his last game for the Wallabies as Rugby Australia indicates it will rip up his contract over his latest social media post. Rugby Australia boss Raylene Castle says she's been in touch with Fallout's camp, but has yet to speak directly with the Underfire star. The eight teams participating in this year's Skipper Cup Fiji Rugby Championship will receive a grant of $50,000 each to help with the development of their clubs. Each team was also given a starter kit to help them prepare for the tournament, which kicks off this weekend. Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor says the grant is targeted at uh, professionalizing the domestic clubs. We've been giving each team 20 rugby boards, uh, and on top of that, we will be uh, providing grants uh, to each team for a value of about 50,000, uh, which will be distributed into the contracting of a manager, a coaches, a SNC coach. Boxing fans are being promised fireworks in Lautoka when Sebastian the Sniper Singh and the Northern Prince Raturakurun Danivavana rumble in the South Pacific boxing program this weekend. Singh has just returned from six weeks of training in New Zealand and is boasting it will be a solid fight tomorrow night. Meli Tavanga reports. Despite undergoing training overseas, Sebastian Singh is aware of his opponent's preparation methods 
guided under one of the greatest in Fijian boxing. I don't rate Rokuro off, you know, even though I trained overseas, Rokuro did the hard yards here. And, uh, you know, having a trainer like uh, Marika Yali, my way on his corner, so I guess, you know, uh, Marika knows me from my amateur background, so I guess they must have picked on a couple of things that they could work on. The 25-year-old says they have done their homework and it is time to put it into action. You know, we don't uh, expect uh, anything less from Rokuro. You know, he's going to come with his A game. You know, I know he knows that I've prepared myself to the best of my abilities. And I know for a fact he has prepared himself to the best of his abilities. So I know come fight night, you know, there'll be a lot of fireworks. Promoter Freddie Chand says the stage is ready for the bout. The event is all set. All the bouts are good. All the boxes are on weight. I have checked all the boxes throughout Fiji. We, there's no excuse for any boxes for this fight, especially the main supporting one. They will have 14 bouts before the Northern Prince meets the sniper at Tilak High School tomorrow night. Meli Tawanga, FBC Sports. In today's play of the day, Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz showing why he was the 2018 NBA dunk champ by slamming it down in their 120 to 100 win over the Minnesota Timberwolves. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and the new media. Amazon Alexa adds a detailed news reading option. More on this after the break. My name is Nan, I'm from Bua. As a friend of North, I'm a famous one. That's why Radio Fiji 2 is also a famous place. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. Sima Nakasi, I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2 for listening to Radio Fiji 2. I am Uncle King, singer to the town, taxi driver, they say rugby famous, they say Radio Fiji 2 famous. Radio Fiji 2, the country of the country. In your media tonight, Amazon Alexa is now a source of world, world events, sorry, as its voice assistant will read you the latest news in detail. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello to you and to the weekend. The weather is going to get wet tomorrow, but it won't make any difference to those following the FPC coverage of the Singapore Sevens. Now taking a look in the west, a great day to be at the park. Eastwards from Pekhavarasuva, it was humid with some showers lined up for tonight. And up north, some sunny spells. At sea, southeast winds gusting 20 to 25 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 12.30 am with low tide at 6.26 am. Sunrise at 6.15. For tomorrow, as much as I don't wish to spoil your weekend mood, but I must say, showers will swing by tomorrow afternoon and get heavy later in the day. Tomorrow's temps mostly ranging in the low 30 degree range. And looking further on to Palm Sunday, expect cloudy skies and possible heavy rain. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, do you think the tea could be a factor in the defense of the Singapore title? There is nothing tough when we get together. I think Fiji is a very nice team. Boys have a very good understanding. And it's like, it's like a family team, so there is no problem winning. Any opponent come, we'll win. Uh, in my opinion, I think they would have enough rest to take away the fatigue. It could be, but Fiji will win. No, I don't think so, because uh, the way they played last week, they can uh, do the same this week. I think they'll win it again. In the world of the weird and wonderful, a man captures images of his late grandpa's ghost after paranormal activity is reported. Recapping the main stories for tonight, fuel prices to drop on Monday, birth registration goes electronic, and silent protests planned over SDA school closure. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM to our poll question segment, We're Asking. Do you think the Hong Kong momentum will carry through to victory in Singapore? Well, we'll find out this week, but be sure to visit our FBC website to answer.
Before we go, our shot of the day. Absolutely stunning one from Anj Singh who says life is a journey that must be traveled no matter how bad the roads. So true. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and blessed weekend. Good night. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the water wrong and Bula Fib, number two, and a serre. Oya was it size, a lambasa, and the teletain of Rome and Bula Fem, number two, and a serre. We have the Tumeli, a corner town of Hinatoka, Teletakina of Rome and Bula Fem, number two, and a serre. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakanambula Fem, number two, and a serre. Bula Fem, number two, and a serre.